couple of things first before I start my video, which is first of all, look at how beautiful my flowers are that I got from Columbia Road Flower Market. Um, I thought I'd include these in the video because this video is going to be on moles and that's a pretty dry topic, even though I shouldn't say things like that. So here's a bit of beauty to try and brighten up the video. Second thing, Lyra has decided to honour us with her presence. So here she is. I'm not going to be talking very long on this video because most of it's going to be me doing calculations. I'm just going to put the flowers down. All I really wanted to say though is people don't like moles because they're like, what on earth is a mole? To me a mole is a grey velvety creature which lives underground and you'd be right. However, mole is simply the unit used to describe the amount of a substance. The reason why we have to talk about the amount of substance in terms of moles is because when you're talking about atoms, there are so many atoms that if you actually talk about the exact number, you get into ridiculous figures and you have to use standard form, which is just way too complicated, makes the maths impossible. So we use mole. I'm going to loosely define a mole. A mole is defined as the number of atoms in exactly 12 grams of carbon-12. Remember that there are several different isotopes. I'll talk about that in another film, but there are several different isotopes of carbon. One of them is carbon-12, one of them is carbon-14. We use carbon-12. Now the exact number of atoms in 12 grams of carbon-12 is 6 times 10 to the 23, and we call that Avogadro's number. That's obviously a huge number, hence why we describe things in terms of number of moles. Now, if none of this is making any sense to you at all, don't worry. I'm going to show you the most straightforward way of doing the calculations, and even if you don't understand them, I promise you'll get them all right because the way I'm going to show you is really straightforward and it all relies on one equation. So now I'm going to switch to my writing because that's how I'm going to have to do this video. I just wanted to say one more thing which is that because there are so many different mole calculations, today's video is going to cover a number of moles, calculating relative formula mass, calculating the mass of a substance, working out empirical formulae, percentage composition of an element in a compound and percentage yields. Um, I'm going to do another video to do with titration calculations, gas volumes, electrolysis, etc. But this is what today's video is on, so um, only watch if those things are going to be useful to you. Let's just quickly talk about this triangle. This will be your triangle which you need to be using all the time. It's amazing. I really recommend that you use these formula triangles because they make everything much more straightforward and you need to learn less. Remember when you're using formula triangles, that, for example, if you want to calculate the mass, cover the value you're looking for, mass, and therefore, to calculate mass, you're going to do relative formula mass times the number of moles. If you want to calculate the number of moles, this time you cover number of moles, and then look, you, to, in order to calculate that, you just do mass, and then this is a divisible sign, so then it's mass divided by MR. Then if you want to find the MR out, you cover MR up, and the way you work that out is dividing mass by the number of moles. But before we talk more about the triangle, I'm just going to quickly show you how to do the relative formula mass, the MR, of a substance. In terms of mole calculations, this is one of the more simpler questions that they could ask you. So I'm going to calculate the MR of magnesium hydroxide. I'm going to take, and remember to use the periodic table for this, I'm going to take the mass of magnesium, which is 24, and then I'm going to add oxygens, which is 16, plus hydrogen, which is 1. And then remember, I need to multiply that by 2 due to this little 2 here. So then the answer is 24 plus 16 plus 1 is 17, 2 times that, so that's 34. I hope my maths is good. And then we've got 58. So there's the MR of magnesium hydroxide. In this slightly different question, we're going to be finding the mass of 0.2 moles of copper sulfate using the formula triangle, covering mass, so we know we need to do a calculation which is MR times number of moles. Writing down the equation. So the MR, so copper is 64 plus sulfur, which is 32, plus 4 lots of oxygen. and the number of moles was 0.2. I'm going to work out the MR first of all to make sure I don't make any mistakes. So that's 160, and then we're going to multiply it by 0.2. So the answer is 32, and because it's a mass, we need to write grams. 
We're going to be looking at a different type of question now, which is working out the percentage by mass of a particular element in a compound. And I have an example here. So we're going to be working out the percentage by mass of nitrogen in ammonium sulfate. So just to read out this formula in case it's unclear, that's NH4 brackets 2 SO4. So the way in which you have to answer any of these sorts of questions is you need to work out the exact mass of the element, take into account any of the small numbers that you have, and then you divide it by the MR of the whole compound. And then because it's a percentage, you times it by 100. I'll just talk through this example to make sure you're happy. So I'm going to start by looking at nitrogen. Because there's a 2 outside the bracket, remember that 2 applies to everything inside. So whatever we have for nitrogen, we have to multiply that by 2. So the atomic mass of nitrogen is 14, so I'm going to multiply that by 2 and then divide it by the MR of ammonium sulfate. Um, hydrogen's atomic mass is 1. We need to multiply by that by 4 due to that 4 there, and then multiply the whole lot by 2, so that's actually going to be 8. We're going to add sulfur, which is 32, and then 4 lots of oxygen. So that's 28 divided by... 132 multiplied by 100 and the answer is 21.21 so I'm going to say that that's 21.2%. Next up we're going to be looking at percentage yield, particularly in reversible reactions where the reactions go back and forth all the time. You find that you don't get 100% of the amount that you expect to get and that's due to lots of things. That's because some of the reactions don't go to completion. In other reactions, the reactants behave in a really strange way, so you don't actually get all the products you want. And then sometimes you lose some of the products when you're actually trying to remove them from the reaction mixture. We can work out the percentage yield if we find the mass of the product obtained and we divide that by the maximum theoretical mass of product. And then we times the whole lot by 100, again, because it's percentage. So, for example, in a reaction where we produced 18 grams of a compound, but the maximum theoretical yield was 25, what would the percentage yield be? So it's quite straightforward. So we do 18 divided by 25 multiplied by 100. And the answer there is 72%. So now we're going to look at empirical formulae. Remember an empirical formulae is the simplest ratio of atoms of each element present in a compound. And it's best to arrange this in a table format because you can use your formula triangle all over again and then the values just pop out at the end. So the first thing you want to do is list the elements present. So we've got copper and oxygen in this particular example. So here's copper and there's oxygen. The first thing you want to do is write mass. And now we're going to turn this into a table. So the mass is given in the question. We have 12.8 grams of copper and 1.6 grams of oxygen. Now we're going to work out the MR. Using the periodic table, we see that copper has a relative atomic mass of 63.5 and oxygen has 16. Now we're going to work out the number of moles and we see that what we have to do is divide the mass by the MR. So I'll do a quick calculation. What you want to do now is divide by the smallest number. And you can see that that will be 0.1. So divide both sides by 0.1. And this is when you get your ratio, which will actually be 2 to 1. Now, lots of people think that that's the final answer. It isn't. You need to make sure that you actually give an empirical formula, which in this case will be Cu2O. Now, I just want to quickly mention a couple of other things to do with empirical formulae. If you're not given a mass in the question, you're given percentages, like 50% carbon, 25% hydrogen, 25% oxygen, I don't know what compound I'm making by the way. Simply use the percentage that they give you as your mass. Okay, so if it was 50% was then your mass would be 50 grams, so don't let that worry you. 
The other thing is, if this ratio isn't a whole number, so say it was 2.5 to 2, remember with ratios you can't have non-whole number ratios. So just multiply it by a number which causes it to become a whole number. So in that case I would multiply both sides by 2 and have a ratio of 5 to 4. My final mock calculations that I'm going to show you to you in today's tutorial is going to be to do with reacting masses and that's when you have a certain amount of one substance and you need to work out how much of another substance was present. So the very important thing to do with this is first of all make sure you have a balanced symbol equation. So we've got sodium hydroxide reacting with hydrochloric acid to produce sodium chloride and water. So here's the equation. Now first of all make sure that it is balanced and we can see that this one actually is. We're going to start by putting down what we know and we know that 25 grams of sodium hydroxide were reacted. So here's 25 grams. What is it we're trying to find out? The mass of hydrochloric acid. So I'm going to write an X here because I don't know what that is and that's where my answer will come from. I'm not interested in sodium chloride or water so I'm going to choose to cross those out so I don't do any unnecessary calculations and waste time in the exam. So, like empirical formulae, I'm going to use a table. So there's mass. After that, it's the same as always, I'm going to write MR and work out the relative atomic mass. So sodium has an atomic mass of 23, oxygen is 16, and hydrogen is 1. So that's an MR of 40. Let's do the same for the hydrochloric acid. Hydrogen is 1. Chlorine is 35.5, so that will be 36.5. At this point, we have both the mass and the MR, so we're going to be able to find out the number of moles. So number of moles is mass divided by MR, so the number of moles of sodium hydroxide will be 25 divided by 40, which is 0.625. Now looking at the balanced symbol equation, we can see that there are no large numbers in front of any of the values. So if we know the number of moles of sodium hydroxide, then it means we know the number of moles of hydrochloric acid. So we're actually going to carry that number across. So it's going to be 0.625. If you're not very keen on what I just said, I'm going to show you a slightly different example, and hopefully that will help clear things up. But because there's no large numbers in front, we know that the same amount of each substance is reacting, so the number of moles of hydrochloric acid will be 0.625. So we have two pieces of information, that's MR and number of moles, and therefore we can calculate the mass. Remember that mass is MR times number of moles, so therefore we do 0.625 times 36.5, and our answer therefore for hydrochloric acid is 22.8. Let's have a look at this slightly more difficult example. We have 2.75 grams of aluminium chloride which reacted with silver nitrate to produce aluminium nitrate and silver chloride and we need to calculate the mass of silver nitrate that reacted. As always, make sure you have a balanced symbol equation. This one's already been done for us and we can see that three times as much silver nitrate reacts compared with the aluminium chloride. We're going to start with what we know. We know that 2.75 grams of aluminium chloride reacted, so there's your 2.75. And what are we trying to find? The mass of silver nitrate. So there's the X, and we're going to get rid of the values that we don't need. After you've done that, draw the table, so we'll start with mass. And then after that we're going to work out the MR. The atomic mass of aluminium is 27 plus chlorine, which is 35.5 times 3. MR is 133.5. So work out the MR of silver nitrate, 108 plus 14 plus 3 times 16, 170. Calculate the number of moles now of aluminium chloride, that's 2.75 divided by 133.5. Sorry, I made a mistake. The answer is 0 0.0205, blah, blah, blah. Because we know from the balanced symbol equation that three times as much silver nitrate reacts, that means we have three times as many moles. So multiply that number by three in order to work out the number of moles of silver nitrate. Don't overround because you don't want to be adding inaccuracies at this stage. 
Now calculate the mass by times in the number of moles by the MR, and we see that the mass of silver nitrate that reacted was 10.5 to 3 sig fig. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like my Facebook page, Science with Hazel, and ask me any questions. And thanks to Shannon for suggesting this topic. Really grateful.